Tim, it's uh, great to be here at the uh, conference in Crete on the physics of fine tuning. I've been uh, interested in fine tuning uh, for a long time to determine is it something that will lead us to a deeper understanding of reality. And because, if I were honest, I would hope that there is some teleological explanation to reality, that makes me ever so worried that I will um, not deal with the data appropriately because I have an internal bias or, or hope, not a, not, not a knowledge. And so therefore what I, what I do as, a, as trying to uh, 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 fix the potential problem is to look, look at it from reverse and ask what are the fallacies about something I'd like to believe. And so from the standpoint as a, as a philosopher of physics, if you look at the fine tuning arguments that have been around, what are some of the fallacies that we can uh, be on the lookout for? So I guess there are a couple that you should be especially aware of. One is that to get the fine-tuning issue on the table in the first place, you need to make some judgment about something uh, that you're finding seeming to be an odd coincidence, seeming to be in some sense improbable that it would just turn out that way. And that judgment of probability or improbability is always bringing into play some background conditions that maybe you haven't thought about quite clearly. So if you say, how likely is it that uh, a certain constant of nature should fall in some range? It's not entirely clear what you mean by how likely or, or what you mean by saying the range is very small, isn't it? I mean, if, if the range could go from negative infinity to positive infinity, <laughs> then in some sense, no matter how big the range is, you could say, gee, it's tiny. I mean, you've got infinity there and it's got to be somewhere. Right, right. Um, so there's this question of how are you measuring the smallness or the delicateness of whatever it is you're worried about. So that's one thing you should think about. The, the other thing you should be aware of, it's particularly relevant to the way you set this up, is the solution to a fine tuning problem where you really need a solution need not be teleological in any sense. That was more or less what already happened with Darwin, right? People looked at animals and they were very complicated and had this, this uh, structure that they said, gee, that must have been designed. That must have been an intentional act to create animals with this very complicated. Right. And uh, Darwin figured out, no, I can explain that through a different process that doesn't involve any intentionality. I can explain that through entirely natural means that are not forward looking. So the appearance of design we know can be accounted for without any actual design. Now whether a kind of Darwinian selection explanation could work in this setting, you have to look at the details. Certainly any kind of multiverse solution, which is a perfectly good solution to the problem, doesn't involve design. It says there's just blind variation by chance. You've tried somewhere or other, every combination of constants has been tried. Uh, we find ourselves in the sweet spots where they work out well so that observers can in fact flourish there and that's not surprising. So any such explanation presumably would not involve any kind of teleology yeah, the, at all. The feeling on that uh, would be, unless there were st very strong independent evidence, that that's an extravagant solution. Uh, to have a very large number, and pe people even use the term infinite number of, of universes, which which, uh, I mean, a real countable infinity sounds, uh, you know, that doesn't, doesn't sound consistent to me, that, but you need a, a huge number, if not absolute infinity. And, and uh, you know, does that satisfy Occam's razor, even though it's one kind of concept that you have uh, infinite numbers to solve this problem? Mm -hmm. to, me, to me, that's interesting all by itself, that, that the multiverse with its e e extreme uh, uh, expansion of reality is needed to solve a fine-tuning problem, that, that makes me, maybe in, in, in a few days a week, that makes me suspicious. Well, except <laughs> that you at least have a sketch of a mechanism, yeah. or people yeah. say this in string theory, which was not developed for the purpose of, of solving this problem. And that's an important point. That it, that it just naturally gives rise to this. Now, whether all the details of that argument are correct or not, it's at least 
a broad sketch of a kind of physics that seems to lead to this right. sort of thing all by itself. So you are generating the multiverse, whether through uh, string theory, whether through inflation theory, through uh, totally other mechanisms. Right. You're not developing it just for this, although some people say that there's motivation to deal with fine-tuning once you have it. So there's a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a, uh, a, cross, uh, a cross interest, but uh, I understand that. I'd like to go back to the first point, though, and explore what, what, what a range would be uh, to, to make, because I, I've heard different things, you know, people talk about 10% or 1%, uh, but for example, if, if, the, uh, if the, uh, the ratio between uh, the electromagnetic force and gravity is 10 to the, or order of magnitude, 10 to the 40th to 1. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what's that? That's, uh, you know, 4 trillions plus, you know, yeah. you know no, it's, it's uh, three, 3 trillions, uh, 10,000 10, trillion, 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 mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, you know, 10% would be that same 10 to the 40th, but, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.9 or something. Yeah. But, but maybe you, if you're within a thousandth, uh, uh, not, you know, only one thousandth of it, not, not 1%, but, but so that would be 10 to the 37th. And once you get out of that range, uh, then you, you know, you blow up, you have no, no complexity and no life. Uh, is that fine to it? Well, y again, you, you're using... Yeah real numbers and appealing to a kind of natural measure on the real numbers to say this is very small or this I, is I don't very know. big. But whether that's the right measure to think of the physical significance of this, I think, should be an open question. Okay. All so right. so um, how, how do you make progress? Yeah, I, I, again, I just think you have to be careful about it. Now, I, it's not that I'm not also moved <laughs> by someone um, drawing pictures where you use this kind of natural looking mathematical measure and according to that it's this tiny <laughs> tiny tiny little region yeah um but but first of all whether there could be just a natural principle that would lead you to that region without any teleology is you know that's perfectly possible so take for example you have this problem about the uh, initial condition for the big bang it's got to be very 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 low entropy right. in some sense again a picture of this huge space and right. god you know very precisely picking out this little right. tiny, tiny, tiny region for the initial condition. Right. Not God, but Roger Penrose uses but, this number 10 to the 10 to the 123rd right. as, as uh, the possibility, which but, where certainly sounds extraordinary. Right, and, and it's in Penrose's book that you actually do have a picture of God pointing <laughs> to this region, right? Uh, on the other hand, Penrose himself says, well, I can get this very low entropy by, by a hypothesis about the gravitational situation, that the vial curvature is zero. So I just say, here's the condition, the vial curvature is zero. That takes me in this huge space of possibilities down to this tiny little region. Now, if you tell me, okay. And we, we don't know whether that's real or it works, but the point is it could work. It, yeah, it, it, it could work. Point, and could something work. like that, you'd say, all right, that looks like a pretty natural physical condition. It doesn't seem to imply that there's a creator or a designer. It's a nice mathematical condition. If you tell me it's, you know, it's a fact about nature that at the Big Bang you started out with vial curvature equals zero, and that takes care of this problem, that seems to me to be a pretty good explanation. 